Uh, hey, 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 Mario, uh, this GPU are running very loud and hot. Perhaps we can fix it. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and right here we have the 5700 XT. And you guys have been requesting for a while that I slap an Arctic Accelerator Extreme on it. Now, there's two variants of this that'll do a similar job. This is the version 4, which costs, I think, like $15 more than the version 3. And for all intents and purposes, they're pretty much the same cooler, but this one has some sort of a backplate thing going on. So, we've already done the initial phase testing of this GPU at heaven at 1440p, and at 100% fan speeds, we've got five, oh, no, six different sensors now to monitor on this graphics card. So we can see these things have come a long way and that they're putting more sensors on, so they can pretty much extract the most performance out of these cards without risking damaging the cards. But now we actually have two GPU thermal sensors a sensor for the memory temperatures, and then three sensors for the VRM temperatures. And out of the box, this thing went to 44% at 25C ambient, and then at 100% fan speeds, the temperatures were much better, but of course the noise was going up to 64 decibels, which was just incredibly loud. So what we're gonna do is we're going to slap an Arctic Accelero now on this cooler, and then rerun these tests to see if this thing really is worth the money or of course it's an option if you pick up one of these on a sale and it's the only card available on sale so we just finished pulling apart the 5700 xt and this is a new trend you're seeing with gpus and that is just there's a lot more screws screwing these things together. Uh, Nvidia use a special type of hex screw uh, with some of their cards, but I preferred the old days where it was like probably like five or six screws in total. Uh, this thing has over 20, so if you wanna pull it apart, be prepared to do a lot of unscrewing. Another thing too is that the GPU doesn't use thermal paste, it uses a thermal pad. So you will have to use some thermal paste, but I believe this should have some in the box. So what we're gonna do now is quickly use an alcohol wipe to wipe all this down, and then we're gonna unbox this and see what's inside. So starting to put this together, I can already see a few things that worry me and I'm actually gonna avoid. I'm not even gonna put this back plate on at all because you run a high risk of damaging components and since it's got a protective film, it's actually gonna work like an insulator anyway. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, you can do cutouts on the back, but that's gonna take a lot of time because you're gonna have to measure everything up precisely because you don't wanna have it so it's off center there. And all it's really gonna be doing is component, uh, cooling some SMDs on the back here. So it's really not worth the time and the hassle. And as we said before, this is the only real difference compared to the Extreme 3, which you can then save 15 bucks and not bother with the hassle, or what I feel is kind of worthless for that extra money for that. Another thing too is I do remember off the top of my head getting these little heat sinks with the version three in the past. And the version four doesn't include any of these heat sinks. They just include thermal pads, which is really not gonna do a good job since the memory is already being cooled. And there's also four little components that are being cooled off this stock cooler right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install uh, the heat sinks on the MOSFETs and the memory so if you did get the version four, then you will have to go out and buy your own little heat sinks. They are very cheap, but I will ask Arctic if the version three still includes these because it's very important, especially with a card like this that comes with it out of the factory. And so what we're gonna do is install that all right now with some, uh, this is a different type of thermal paste that will actually stick on 
and then harden up so the heat sinks won't fall off. And then after that, we're gonna try and see if this thing works and how well it works compared to the stock cooler. So we've now got the Arctic Accelero installed on the 5700 XT. And one thing to be very careful of is when you're installing the actual GPU from the four screws is do make sure that they're all tensioned properly on all four corners. And another thing about that too is the instruction manual said to install the washers. I had to actually take the washers off. Otherwise the GPU would not be able to contact the actual uh, surface at all. So that was one thing that I think kind of needs updating in their instruction manual. But that being said, let's run all the tests on both the same 44% fan speeds, then the max fan speeds, then we'll come back with the conclusion with the Arctic Accelerator. And so here we are now with the final verdict on the Accelero. And this is where things get a little bit weird because the temperatures on the main GPU drop significantly. And we're talking on the main GPU temperatures themselves, 54 degrees Celsius, which is 12 degrees lower than that of the 5700 XT reference cooler at 100% fan speeds. And of course at 64 decibels noise, that was just unbearable in all way, shape and form. Uh, the Accelero itself, this is the tricky part. I could actually only get an accurate result with 100% fan speeds because manually setting the fan speeds at 44% uh, made it so it had a mind of its own. When you jumped into the benchmarks, it just started ignoring that manual set fan speed and started ramping itself up. But at 37 decibels at 100% fan speeds, the Accelero really does a good job of giving you good airflow for low noise. And so these temperatures that we've got here where the second GPU temperature was 71 degrees, so 11 degrees cooler than the reference cooler, uh, showed that the GPU core temperatures themselves dropped significantly. But when we move over to the memory, this is where it comes in between the two. So 82 degrees on the memory, then the VRM, the three temperatures there, we had 70, 63, and 59 respectively. So it's beating the reference cooler out of the box and coming in with less noise where the reference cooler at 44% fan speeds came in at 43 decibels. That's the auto fan speeds for the 5700 XT reference cooler. And the memory and VRM temperatures were coming lower too. And the GPU temperatures were significantly lower, a lot lower. And so now you're at an interesting crossroad with the Accelero 4, and that is you're not gonna get a whole lot more out of this card in terms of overclocks where the memory speeds actually make up a big portion of overclocking this GPU. As we saw with the reference cooler when we dropped it to 100% fan speeds, it's going to perform better in terms of overclocking because those memory temperatures are now lower and that enables you to ramp up the memory speeds and get more out of the card. Even though overclocking really isn't worth it on the 5700 XT, it's still something to notice that the Accelero does really well at cooling the GPU, but the rest of the components sort of fall in between that max reference speed fan speed and then the out of the box setting. So in a nutshell, the only reason to do this mod would be simply to drop your temperatures down and get a lot lower noise. It wouldn't really be to overclock. And of course, when you're looking at the price tag, 65 US dollars for the Extreme 4, I wouldn't bother going with that variant because I don't feel like it was tuned for the new AMD Navi cards. I would actually go with the Accelero 3 and even then, I'm not sure if Arctic is including those little heat sinks like they did in the original uh, Extreme 3 when I bought it all those years ago. So basically, if you wanted to drop noise and temperatures on this GPU and you had $50, I would go for the Extreme 3. But again, I will confirm in the description and the comments if Arctic is still including those little heat sinks in the paste to keep the heat sinks on with that Extreme 3 version because I feel like them not including it with the Extreme 4 
was a real miss in my opinion. And of course, with that back plate, as I said before in the vlog, it just simply isn't worth putting on. You're gonna risk damaging the card. It's really, I can't see it really performing any better in terms of giving you better temperatures. And it's just gonna be a big hassle in order to get working on the 5700 XT. And now lastly, in regards to this mod, I feel like I fast tracked some things, but that's because I've had a bit of experience with the Accelero's and there are some things to be careful of. The instruction manual really needs to be updated because as I said before, I had to take out those two washers on the inside and then on the outside, I just uh, completely missed the back plate and then just installed it that way. And there are some things to look out for. And that is of course, when you're installing those little heat sinks, make sure they're not coming anywhere near other metal components on the actual PCB itself and really take your time to do this mod. And another thing with the memory heat sinks is when I installed the base plate cooler, I had to actually uh, push out the metal heat sinks on the memory so they weren't fitting flush. And uh, so that has to do with uh, Arctic needing to make the base plate of the actual cooler smaller so you can fit some proper memory heat sinks and get them fully pasted on the PCB. And now it's time for the question of the day, which comes from Clown Baby, and they ask, uh, where can I find the woman version of you? And that's a really good question, mate, because I'm still looking myself. But I have put together a few possible places, uh, one being where the used PC parts are at, another being uh, just all around picking up deals, another being the dumpster. There's quite a few possible places. But anyway guys, quickly recapping today's video, the Accelero, I feel like it needs an update for 2019, especially with the Navi GPUs. If they made those base plates a little bit smaller and included a kit to properly cool the memory even better than what I did here today, as well as address the VRM properly and update the instruction manuals, then it would get a glowing recommendation. As it stands, it's a bit of a hit or miss mod, and especially to the point where I wouldn't recommend the Accelero 4, uh, and I'd only recommend the Accelero 3, where you don't need that backplate and you can save yourself 15 bucks. Though, that aside, it did drop the noise considerably and it did drop the temperatures on the GPU itself considerably. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, drop a question below and I'll get back as soon as I can. And also on that note, if you're enjoying the content, sub button, ring the bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.